Where's Gretchen? Hi. Hello, Gretchen. <laughs> Welcome to Royston, the home of the Royston Cave. From ancient carvings of a mystical cross that links the Oak Island treasure to a now dead medieval military organization in England, to a deity that traces back to an ancient family that was linked with this same medieval military organization. Here is what Oak Island scientists found in a tomb that was sealed for thousands of years. The search for treasure never ends for the Legina brothers. Interestingly enough, it isn't limited to the fascinating Oak Island or the two treasure hunting brothers. What do we mean? Well, the simple answer to this is that in order to find this treasure that has eluded many for hundreds of years on Oak Island, Marty Legina has taken his son Alex along with Charles Barkhouse so that they can take this investigation all the way to Royston, England, in order to follow an interesting lead. Once there, they met with Gretchen Cornwall, the author of The Secret Dossier of a Knight Templar of the Sangreal. Did you hear that right? Knight Templar? Yes, guys. Today, we're going to join them as we explore Royston Cave, an ancient cave that was once believed to be the meeting place of the Knights Templar. We all know who these guys were, but for those who may be unfamiliar with the events taking place during medieval times, the Knights Templar were a medieval Christian order that protected and fought for the Christians during the days of the Crusades. What does this medieval military order have to do with Oak Island, you may ask? Well, the interesting thing about this group is that they were known for their massive wealth during their days of prominence. It is rumored that they may have buried priceless religious treasures and relics on our captivating island at some point in time between the 12th and 14th centuries, long before the treasure hunting frenzy began on Oak Island. Let's take a look at what these guys find in their search for treasure nearly 3,000 miles away from Oak Island. Why don't you just give us some background? Well, there are some people who believe this is a secret Templar initiation chamber. As the one who had been studying the Knights Templar for many years, Gretchen Cornwall was of the opinion that Royston Cave could be an essential point in the history of the Knights Templar and the Curse of Oak Island crew's search for treasure on Oak Island. That is why she insisted that she must show them the displays of symbology in the mystical cave. Founded in 1184, this small town of Royston was actually part of the ancient Roman Empire. That's how old and mysterious this place is. As amazing as that is, it's perhaps more important to note that it is also believed to be a notable stronghold for the Knights Templar for about 200 years between the 12th and 14th century. That's probably when the medieval military organization was able to construct this secret cave. We can't really tell because its existence only became known to the public in the middle of the 18th century, which is when a secret entrance was discovered when some people were carrying out some construction in the town's marketplace. Imagine if nothing was going on at all. It may still be hidden till this day. Well, thanks to this discovery, this ancient mystical cave has now become a major tourist attraction for people like the Leginas, who may be looking for a connection to the medieval Christian order. Once the Leginas stepped into the cave, they were immediately overtaken by wonder. You can see how exciting the place was to the guys once Gretchen Cornwall announced that Royston Cave was an initiation chamber for the Knights Templar. You can just imagine the thousands of men who came to this place hoping to be a part of something so massive. Looking at all the strange markings and symbols on the walls, you can tell that this place was indeed a hallowed place to the group. At least, that is what Marty felt as he stared at awe at the walls. It is indeed truly amazing. To Alex, it was incredibly amazing because he deduced correctly that most of the construction of this place was done by hand. Eerily, just like many of the ancient networks of tunnels found on Oak Island. As amazing as this similarity might be, wait till you hear about the background given by Gretchen Cornwall. My theory is, is that there was a little structure above here and that it was disguised as a market stall to hide the activity here. Apart from reconfirming that this place must have been a Templar initiation chamber, she also had a theory that there was a little structure high up in the building that may have been hidden in the guise of a market stall. For those who knew what was going on underneath this market stall, they'd come down a small ladder with a candle so that they could see through what would probably have been a pitch dark cave. Interesting. Walking through this approximately 13 to 16 foot cave, the team was excited by the fact that these dimensions were eerily similar to the original money pit the ground zero of the more than 200-year-old treasure hunting frenzy over at Oak Island. 
What other similarities did the cave have with Oak Island? Gretchen Cornwall went on to say that this place wasn't a safe haven to only the English members of the Knights Templar. Every member of the Christian organization was welcome to this group, no matter where they were from. It didn't matter if you were French, Italian, or Portuguese, this was like a Brothers Without Borders center for the medieval group going back to the 1100s. While it was clear to the group that this was definitely a stronghold for the Knights Templar, Marty and his son were eager to learn just exactly how this cave was connected to the mysterious Oak Island outside the similar dimensions to the original Money Pit. Once she was asked, Gretchen Cornwall immediately pointed them to a strange image of the wall. This is a strange cross that represents the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. What an image! Surprisingly, or actually, perhaps unsurprisingly, the team was already familiar with this image because Gary had already captured a similar image. Excited by this holy image, Barkhouse was of the belief that it was carved into the wall as some sort of spiritual exercise that helped them sustain their inner divinity. This takes us back to 2019 when Rick Legina went on a trip with his two nephews, Alex and Peter. Together, the trio visited a 14th century prison in Dom, France, because it is believed that members of the Knights Templar were kept captive there when the order was disbanded by King Philip IV in 1307. There, the trio came across some carvings that were eerily similar to those found in Royston Cave. One carving that stood out here was a distinctive cross. As interesting as this may be, guess what Rick and Gary Drayton, the metal detection expert, came across when they were combing through the soil in Oak Island with Gary's metal detector? That's right, it was a lead cross with a strangely similar design to those found in the prison in Dom and Royston Cave. Holy schmoly indeed, especially when you hear that the cross was believed to have originated in France in the 14th century. How many more links do we need to think that it was possible that Marty, Alex, and Charles may have found a third example of a cross in Royston Cave that could serve as even more evidence that the Knights Templar must have had a presence on Oak Island? Amazing, right? The symbology definitely can't be ignored. As captivating as this might be, just wait and see what else Gretchen Cornwall had in store for them. As they came to terms with the potential significance of the cross in the cave, she pointed their attention towards a carving on some of the bricks high up in the caves. On one of these bricks, one could see the year 1347 carved into it. What is the significance of this year? Well, for those who remember Zena Halpern, the historian and seafaring expert that helped the team analyze two ancient French maps that were found on Oak Island, you may remember that the year 1347 was literally written on one of these maps. Wild stuff, right? Truly incredible. Surely this suggests that the Knights Templar must have visited the island between the 12th and 14th centuries. Even more interestingly, the map with the year 1347 written on it clearly displayed several landmarks that were found on the strange and mysterious island. These include the swamp, the stone triangle, and what has eventually been referred to as the money pit. Clearly, if Zena's map is real, it means that there's definitely a connection with the map and Oak Island. Zena's map, if it's real, is a super direct connection to Oak Island. I mean, it is Oh, Oak it Island. is Oak Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah here's the map. And the, the date is actually written out here. Un mille trois cent okay. quarante set. Upon further discussions, the team leaned towards the fact that the year 1347 written on the map most likely referred to the year of a voyage, not the year that the map was made. Maybe that's why it was also written on the stone, because they had to leave their cave and the town, because Royston as a whole may have become too dangerous for the team. To Marty, it even looked like a cornerstone which makes the date even more significant to their venture. This is resounding because while these Templar Knights faced execution in places like France following the abolishment of the order in 1347, a good number of them were able to avoid this persecution along with their sacred treasure, which has never been found. Considering such a thing, is it possible that the Knights Templar may have played a quick one by hiding some of their vast treasure in Royston Cave before transporting them to Oak Island in 1347? As they went through such a possibility, Marty wondered out loud if there were any other possible links that connected the cave to Oak Island and Xena's map. Incredibly, Gretchen pointed the team towards a body behind Charles. Looking at this figure with the head, arms, and body of a man, as well as the tail of a fish, the team was fascinated by the carving of the Melusine on the walls. This was a significant figure to the people of the 6th century, 
especially the Rochefoucauds, who thought this goddess was their common ancestress. This was a very persuasive notion, because the goddess could be found on the Rochefoucauld's family crest, at least according to Gretchen, who had taken the photo while in Rochefoucauld at some point in the past. This goddess on the crest of this family that dated back to the 10th century is significant because the family was believed to be one of the prominent ones that were connected to the Knights Templar. As amazing as this was, it was nowhere as eye-opening as the discovery of a ship's log that was discovered in 2017 by an Oak Island historian known as Doug Crowell. This ship's loft contained details of a naval mission to hide treasure on a wooded island that was located in Nova Scotia towards the end of 1746. Want to guess where that may have been? I know you know what they're talking about. What's even more interesting is who the ship's admiral was. Well, that was Jean-Baptiste louis Frédéric de la Rochefoucauld. The connections are surely too much to be coincidence. Is this conclusive proof that the Rochefoucauld family traveled all the way to Oak Island so that they could bury treasure on the behalf of the Knights Templar? Whatever the answer may reveal itself to be, there's no doubt that Royston Cave is significant to the story and the secrets of Oak Island. Hopefully, with time, the island will be helpful to the team as they search for the treasure hidden on Oak Island from ancient carvings of a mystical cross that links the Oak Island treasure to a now-dead medieval military organization in England, to a deity that traces back to an ancient family that was linked with this same medieval military organization. This is what Oak Island scientists found in a tomb that was sealed for thousands of years.